welcome back to part four of this Krenov cabinet build. As you can see, we've made some progress since part three. We've veneered the doors, both sides to match. You can see we cut the half laps in the doors. So when you open the door, it's gonna reveal this walnut here. You'll also be able to see the walnut from the top and the bottom, but nothing from the outside when it's closed. We took our trim and we took it over the router table and we rounded over the edges. Then we took it over to the miter saw and we cut our miters and then we glued the trim to the tops and the bottoms. At this point, we're ready to do the knife hinges. And the knife hinges, are basically uh, you get like one time to do them. There's no room for error. So we're gonna take this very slow. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you my process for doing it. It might not be the right process and it's probably an easier way. This is the way I found easy for me to do it. So I'm gonna show you. So follow me over the table and we will start doing these knife hinges. All right, let's get started on these hinges and let me show you my process for doing it. First thing is put the door in the vise. Take a piece of uh, blue painter's tape and you lay it down and cut it so it's flush all the way around. Then you're gonna take some two-sided copper tape. I attach that to one side of the hinge. I take the adjustable square, and then we're gonna find where we wanna place this hinge on the door. And when we do that, we're gonna pull the tape and then we're gonna apply it. Let's stick this down. Okay, apply pressure, make sure it sticks. Then I'm gonna take a scalpel, I'm gonna cut out around the hinge, pull it up with the tape, and that's gonna give me my template to cut out. And then pull it up, and hopefully we pull out the tape we want. There we go. We're now gonna attach couple pieces of wood as a guide. Then we're going to use this little flush trim bit, flush trim router I should say with the uh, eighth inch bit in it and it's set to the depth of the set to the depth of the actual hinge and we're gonna by hand we're gonna chew out most of this and then we're gonna come back with chisels and clean up the rest. Okay here we go let's hope uh, we don't lose control of this router and everything goes good. I think that's as close as I dare come with the router. Now I'm going to use chisels to finish up this, this mortise. There you have it, hinges in and adjusted. This has one shot with these things, so you have to make sure you're right. So now we have to do four more, actually, sorry. Now we need to do three more in the doors, and then we have to do four in the top and the bottom. Okay, the knife hinges are done. They're cutting the doors, they're cutting the top and the bottom. They're loosely put together right now. I don't have any screws holding them in there because I want to just test fit to see how they were working, how they were fitting. If you look, everything opens. It closes. I did goof up in one little spot and I'm gonna get the camera and I'm gonna show you but I should be able to fix that with the veneer patch. So let's get the camera come on. Let's get an idea how this is gonna look when it's done. See the half laps, the top and bottom. I didn't want to match trim but you only see those when the doors are opened up. 
Here's the rim. A bit of a pain. It's what knife edges usually are. Transition to the door. Square check in. We still have to glue this case up. Let's focus in on my one jammy. The one mistake I made on these hinges. There's the one mistake I made. I overcut it a little bit, but I might be able to put a piece of veneer in there and kind of hide, hide it to the eye. I hope. Nobody notices it. All right, now we're going to take this cabinet apart. We're going to give it a final sand in. We're going to glue it up. We'll install the doors. We'll final fit them. If we have to do any kind of planing to, to even the gaps out, we will. And from that point, we'll put a finish on it. I don't think I'm going to finish the inside. I'm going to leave that uh, just raw, raw wood. And I'm going to build something to the inside. But this way, when you open up, you don't get that smell of oils and varnishes. I probably could put a, some shellac in there. Maybe I'll do that. I'll seal it. But that'll be the uh, extent of it. The outside's going to get the varnish finish. After that, we'll, uh, we'll start the, uh, the stand. So let's get this thing glued up. Good. Okay, the hinges are installed and the doors fit. We had to do very, very minor tweaking at the very corners of the doors. Probably about 30 seconds of an inch with a hand plane to even the gaps out. It took a time doing these hinges and it paid off in the end. We had to do very, very little adjustment to these doors. Take a look, they work beautifully. We still have a few more things to do with this cabinet. One, I need to We've installed a magnet here to hold this door. What I need to do now is I need to install a magnet here to keep this door closed. But I'm not going to do that until I make the handles and install them because I don't want to close this thing and not be able to open it. So now I'm going to take you around and I'm going to show you a, closer, a little closer look on, on how this cabinet's coming together. It looks pretty cool. Okay, as far as the finish on this thing, what we did is I got a, a comment from someone who uh, was playing around with veneers. He told me that I should put a seal coat first before I put down the varnish to protect the, the glue underneath from being pulled up and causing the bubble in the veneer. So we did that and I applied one coat of varnish so far and it's looking pretty good. It had no problems. And I think I'll probably do one more coat on that. You take a look at the walnut trim. And now when you open the door, this is why I did this, take a look. 
So you open the door, you see the walnut strip here to go with the trim, and also the top of the door, and here in the half lap, and then this door too. Top and here. To sort of bring the uh, the walnut trim when you open the doors into the rest of the cabinet. I think it looks pretty cool. Back up a little bit. And inside the Doug fur, I went with the Doug fur because you notice, look, it's actually like a natural lighting. It makes the inside of the cabinet light up. I still got to build something inside here. I'm not sure what. I'm probably going to hold that off to the end. I'm not going to show you that. I'll show you that in a reveal in the next video, which will probably be the last one. This thing's turning out pretty cool. I mean, this is my first time working with veneers, and let me tell you something. It is just, it's an experience. If you guys haven't done it, you gotta try it. It's not tough, it's just time consuming. That's pretty cool. I can't wait till this cabinet's finished. So, enough about the cabinet. Let me show you what's going on with the stand. So, let's go take a look at that. Okay, let's talk about the stand for this cabinet and why it's already to the point where it's at with the, uh, the wood all cut and the joinery done and it's basically dry fit here on the table. Um, earlier in the week, probably on Thursday, in our area they told, that, uh, told us that there was going to be a hurricane coming. They weren't sure if it was going to hit us or if it was going to be close or not, but they said if it hit us it would be pretty good. And with the last hurricane that hit us, which was Sandy, which beat us up good and we didn't have power for two weeks, I left work on Thursday because I wanted to get here and get to this point so if I did lose power for a week or so, I can still finish this thing up and still have this project ready for the show. And that's my goal is to get this thing done by the end of October because the first week of November is when this thing needs to be shown. What we've done, you can see it's solid walnut. It's very simple, square structure. It's, we use dowels for all the joinery. What's left to do still is cut the notches in the top here. I'm going to have some cross braces that come across that are going to give the cabinet its a floating effect basically. It looks like it's got floating a little bit above of this. So let me get the camera and give you a closer detail of, the, of what we've done. Alright, so see here, real simple, nothing hard. The walnut should blend in beautifully with the trim on the cabinet. That's what we're going for. Well, the good news is this is uh, Saturday night and we've been told that this hurricane is going to miss us. So this was a panic for nothing. Some people panic and run out to the grocery store and buy all the milk and bread. I panic and run to the shop, try to finish a project. Go figure. Well, that's going to wrap it for part four of this Crenel cabinet on stand build. In part five, we're going to finish up the stand. We're going to do our notches, put our cross braces in. We're going to final sand and assemble this, glue it up and put the finish on it. We should have the finish done on the the cabinet by then we got to make the handles we'll show that and install them and I'm gonna build at the inside and that I'm not gonna show we'll do that at the end of the video to reveal what, I, what we're gonna do and truth is I I don't know so it's gonna be you know a surprise for me too when I finally figure it out so we'll see you next time